Alright everybody, welcome back to Metro Dread Part 3. Today we're going to fight a big, uh, fat blob known as Creed. And here we go. And when I first saw this cutscene, I loved it because it was just so cool to see Creed in full 3D in an actual Metroid game again. It's not the biggest deal, but it was cool to me and to most Metroid fans to see Creed again as an actual boss in a mainline Metroid game. Even if it is just fan service, it's still cool, so. Plus, they did a really good job designing him for this game. And same as just casually blasting him in the mouth is hilarious. She's just so used to this stuff, she's done with it. But here we go. Bring it on, big boy. Here we are, second phase of the fight. Second phase, 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 phase. Second part. He's breaking out of his restraints. So that's obviously not a good thing for us, but Thomas is good enough to deal with it. And oh my lord. I have no idea what's going on there, but it looks like a very bad infection. Need to get that checked out, Craig. You gotta jump over the slime balls as he's launching them at you. You just really have to spam him with the beam to get him to proceed to the next part of the fight. Where he knocks this uh, grab point down so we can keep blasting him in the face. There we go. Dodge that one. Oh, come on, hit him in the face. Ah, come on. Good. We can get back up here like this. Easy way to get back up. Short trip. Oh man, I didn't mean to do that, but I think we can get him with this round of shooting. Plus it's just cool to see the uh, cinematic moments in the game. Yep, we got him. Okay, cool. And that's pretty much the crate boss fight. It's not that hard, but it's pretty fun. There are a few times when it can catch you by surprise, though, when he's punching the wall straight out of nowhere. And Sam is just casually dodging that big spike there. It's also pretty badass. And there he goes, meeting the same fate as Crocomire, apparently. You ever wonder if Crocomire and Kraid were related in some way? I mean, they look sort of similar. They're both really big and both lunk around in giant rooms that they really have no business being in, so maybe that's just part of their thing, I don't know. Either way, I think it gets us access to the diffusion beam. The diffusion beam is a carryover from Metroid Other M, actually. And it's basically acting as a pseudo wave beam that, or a smaller version of a wave beam that just slightly penetrates walls. Like this? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, it basically acts as a wave beam before you get the wave beam, which is kind of weird that they. Most of the power ups they have in this game early on are just smaller versions of other power ups you get later. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's just kind of weird, like... Eh, I get what you're doing, but why? You could have had, like, other cool power-ups instead that would have been a lot nicer. But either way, it's still a fun power-up. It's nice. And it's what we need to get further in the game, so we're gonna go ahead and use it. 
also do like the variety of the load screens in this game. They did, you know, went kind of the same route as Metroid Prime, where elevators and, you know, teleports and things like that are act as load screens. But in this game, they did a pretty good job keeping the variety high in terms of what they look like and how you get around the map. So now that we have the fusion beam, we can get back down through here. And we'll be able to get early access to the grapple beam. Which we're going to try to do first time here, but can't make any promises that it's going to work out that well. So, just bear with me. We're going to try to get it first time, though. And there are ways to do this before you actually fight Kraid. But, like I said, it's not really worth it because of the time investment that you have to go through. Oh, I think we are dead, so we're going to have to try this again, sadly. Yep, we're dead. So, we're going to have to try it again. I'm not going to edit out the failures at least first couple times because I want to be true to the game and how hard it can be to get some of these tricks down. Once you do get used to the tricks and the timing on them, it's not that bad, but it's still something that you can always mess up even when you're an expert at it. And sometimes that's just down to how the game feels like behaving. You know, sometimes the game's just going to do things that shouldn't do or that you don't expect it to do thankfully it's not that hard to retry it's just a short walk and you're there pretty much so you just slide through here and we'll jump off of that and that's kind of like DKC so thankfully if you jump early enough you can kind of get it where You can jump off of that uh, thing to try again until you get it, like that. There we go. Like I said, it's not the hardest trick by, by a mile, but it's definitely a trick that can mess you up if you're not careful because of the weird timing on jumping when you slide out from under there. But either way, this will get us early access to the grapple beam, and then we'll come back and go to Berenia, the water area that we haven't actually been to yet. Technically, the way this game wants you to progress is to go to Berenia first, go through a bunch of puzzles to get the bombs, then go back through here to get the grapple beam, and then go back to Berenia again and finish getting all the way through there, get the flash shift, and then make forward progress to killing the yellow Emmy to get the speed booster. Thankfully, it's not that bad, though, uh, as far as getting there is concerned. But I do think that it can be kind of tricky sometimes to remember the routing to get through here early. Especially when you're going through enemy zones, it can be really annoying because enemy zones all kind of start looking the same after a while. And even veterans get tripped up when they're going through enemy zones sometimes. They'll think they're in one of the enemy zones when they're actually in a different one and end up getting turned around. But... It's just one of those things you get used to after playing the game for a while. But now we have the grapple beam. We can move grapple blocks, open grapple doors, and use grapple points. And they made the grapple beam a lot easier to use in this game, the same way that they did in uh, Metroid Samus Returns, the remake of Metroid 2. Which is also really good, by the way. And if anyone would ever like to see us uh, try to play that game, on here, just let me know. I'll try to figure out some way to get it to work. Um, I don't have a capture device for a 3DS, nor do I have a 3DS anymore, but I can try to figure something out, and we'll see about that as time goes on. But there are other Metro games I could try to play for the for the, the channel as well, so like Metro Prime 1 through 3 are potential options. As well as, you know, any of the older Metroids, like Metroid Zero Mission, Metroid Fusion, Super Metroid, any of that, are definitely possibilities that we could uh, look into. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this power-up here, which is... I did not mean to do that. There we go. Had to blow up both of those. Grab this. Spoiler alert, it's... Uh, ammunition capacity for power bombs 
which we will not be getting for quite a while. And we're just going to go back the normal way to get back through here. Because I don't feel like risking falling into the lava and dying and having to do all that again. So we're just going to take the easy way. No need to take unnecessary risks in a casual playthrough, so why bother, right? And we can get this energy reserve, or this energy part, I should say, right here, by doing the same kind of jump that we did before. If I don't uh, keep messing up my timing. Oh, man. It shouldn't be this hard. There we go. Finally got it. I just want to go ahead and grab that so I have it for later. And then we'll progress forward. We'll be getting into an atom room here where we'll have to talk to him for a second. But basically, he's just going to go over uh, what we did with Kraid and Kataran and all that. Most of what Adam says is just recapping some of the stuff. Yeah. Biologic research station. Yeah. It's a laboratory, basically, is all he's telling us. So. And to be careful, as always. So, nothing that informative there. For now, we're going to progress forward and go find the bombs. Which requires us to go through this Emmy zone. time. So now we just gotta go up and up and up and up. Oh boy. Oh man. Stun him again. Go through this door. And it's the wrong one. As I said, it's easy to get turned around in these enemy zones. So we're gonna go through this door. to go all the way up here and go through this door. This leads us to the area where we get bombs and turn on the power on the other side of Daron. As like I said, it's easy to get turned around in those enemy zones, and part of it is just because they all look so similar to each other. Oh. There we go. I don't know why I have so much trouble with those guys sometimes. Their timing just throws me off, I guess. All we gotta do is climb up here. Oop. And turn the power on. And this is the second half of Donron's power that we have to turn on. The first one being before we got the various suit and the wide beam. But now, with that open, we can get access to the bombs, the morph ball. Which is just through here. And again, like the morph ball, it takes quite a while to get the bombs, surprisingly, for whatever reason. Who knows? But now that we have them, we can get through the rest of Berenia like we need to. And if you can tell, right here, where their shadow on the floor is kind of messed up, that's where the bomb point is. Sometimes it's fairly obvious where they're at, but other times you kind of have to just know. So we're just going to keep heading forward. And... Ignore that guy. 
And we're going to take this bomb launcher down to the next area. And we're going to keep moving forward. Because this will lead us to the exit we need to go through. And we'll take us to Berenia. That's a save room. And yes, we will have to go through the Emmy Zone once again to get where we need to go. Thankfully this time it's not too hard because we just gotta go up here. And then we're in the area that leads to Berenia. Oh, the train. And that's another thing I kind of forgot to mention earlier is that these these train segments, these subway or cars, whatever you want to call them, uh, really remind me of the ones from the pirate homeworld uh, area from Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. The only difference being is that these aren't very, you know, orange like those. And it even has kind of the same load screen segment that you have to sit through, which I find kind of funny. Intentional reference or not, it's nice to notice. And of the three suits in this game, I think various suits probably still my favorite. The gravity suit looks pretty cool too. Just like in uh, Samus Returns, they did a really good job making the suits all look different enough from their Super Metroid and uh, Metroid 1 counterparts that it really kind of stands out on its own. We can't go through there yet because we don't have speed booster, but we can take this shortcut thanks to the grapple beam. And we're just gonna try to get this guy off the ceiling so he doesn't start shooting us. And Brenny is a fairly short area actually when I, when it comes down to it. There is a boss in this area that we're not going to get to until a little while later, but that boss can be completely skipped thanks to some techniques that we're going to be using. Yeah, it's submerged, it's underwater, so the space jump and all that is what we're going to have to use to get around later, or at least it's what it wants us to use, but we're not actually going to have that for quite a while. But we're just going to use Grapple Beam to skip across some of these segments. And we're going to go through these Morph Ball Tunnels. Make our way to the next item we have to pick up, which is going to be the Flash Shift. Which essentially acts as like a Mega Man dash from Mega Man X, if you're familiar with those games. And we can use Scrapple Beam to get to this early. You can use the Flash Shift too, but I find it a little harder to use to get through there. And I almost always fall with or without the Flash Shift, so... It doesn't seem to matter too much to me which one you use, really. And then we're gonna go down here. And there's another shortcut we can use with the grapple beam. So we're going to open it up and skip all of that uh, underwater jumping section down there that is just kind of annoying. And we'll get the flash shift, which is just an automatic cutscene. There's no like pickup thing you have to do like you do with the other like Chezo items. All of the Aeon power artifacts that you pick up are just these cubes and you either fight a boss or just kind of find them laying around like this. The first one we got obviously being the Phantom Cloak from Corpius. And yeah, the Flash Shift it basically is just a dash. It can be done up to three times in a row and it's pretty fun to use and pretty useful. Like that. So yeah, it's pretty cool. One of the cooler power-ups that they put into this game, I think. Yeah, we just have to go back up a little ways until we get up to here. And just 
phase sh or uh, flash shift through there. And this area will lead us to a train, but a different train, back to Dairon once we get through, which will allow us to actually fight the central unit for the speed booster any. I'm just going to go ahead and kill these guys to get them out of the way. But yeah, basically here you just open that up and then you have to go through here and do the same thing. And go back up the middle. Which is very annoying since you don't have the gravity suit yet, so you still got to do the water jumping. Once we're through there, it's pretty easy. You just open this up with a diffusion beam shot and go right on through. And here's our train. And like I said, this is going to lead us back to the same area we came from, but a different section of it that will give us access to the central unit that we have to kill to be able to take down the yellow enemy and get the speed booster. And shortly after getting the speed booster, we'll be going into the next big story area with a big cutscene. And we'll actually meet a new character there. So, look forward to that. But I hope uh, everybody's been enjoying the series so far. Looking forward to more episodes. As I said, I'm always trying to improve quality and make sure that I'm as informative as I can be. And trying to work on being more entertaining, which, you know, is an ongoing process. Especially for somebody that's, you know, really new to YouTube and doing the commentary thing. It can be very intimidating, and while I'm trying my best, it's, you know, as always, I'm trying to... You know, work on it as best I can, but you know, there's only so much I can do. Is it through here? No, it's on the next level up. Yeah, if you do this, you can actually skip a lot of platforming to get up here early. And just take on the central unit. The central units are really not that hard, they're just annoying more than anything. But they go down pretty quickly. And we'll have our Omega Cannon for this area, which will lead us into taking down the Yellow Emmy. And while the Omega Cannon's cool, I find it a bit of a contrived kind of device just for progressing the game. But since it's so cool, it kind of makes up for it, I guess. And I've seen some of those videos too where they try to use the Omega Cannon for the entire game, but it's just not made for it. And as a result, you really kind of lose out when it comes to... Oh, I have taken way too long there. to just dodge this and I've screwed up sorry about that everybody we're gonna try again though this time I'm gonna be ready to actually start attacking him as soon as I get out the door as long as you're attacking him right when he shows up it's not that big a deal and there he goes I made it look way harder than it actually is. I'm very good at doing that. But this will get us the speed booster. And we'll be moving on from this area to the next area very quickly. So, look forward to that. And like I said, the next area that we're going to be going to is really more of a story area. 
And shortly after that, we'll be going to Gavran, the sort of green foresty area of this game. But here we go, Speed Booster. If you don't know about uh, previous Metroid games, it's essentially something that makes you just go really fast. And here it goes. And in this game, they've really expanded it to be able to jump off walls with it and all that sort of stuff, which is really cool. And I just messed that up very badly. Because... You're supposed to use it to jump up and get a missile tank here. And I'm just not paying attention like I should be. Because you're supposed to do that. Jump, 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 jump. And there you go. It's not actually that hard of a segment. It's just, uh, like I said, I'm a champion at making things look harder than it needs to be. And we'll keep moving forward. And in this area, we need to charge another speed boost. And charge a shine spark and blast our way up here. Shine sparking is essentially just storing the energy from your running. And then letting it all go in one big blast in one direction. But there's still one little area we gotta get through. Which is up here. To get to the next area we need to get to. We gotta jump up, jump up, and jump up through here. And then... Here we go. We unlock the elevator to the next area we gotta get to. Which I said, as I said, it is a cutscene area called Ferenia. And in Ferenia, we're going to be meeting a new character and getting a lot of information. So I'm going to try to be quiet and let them speak because they actually do speak in this uh, cutscene. But it's going to take a minute to get there. Essentially, this area just acts as kind of a transition to the sort of second half of the game, I'd say. We're not quite at the halfway point yet, but we're getting close. And I'll tell you when we actually get to where I consider the halfway point of the game to be. I mean, I'm sure there's people that say this is actually the halfway point. But to me, the halfway point is a little further into the game. And here we're going to get our next energy part. So we have three of four. There will be another one that we can get in just a few minutes to complete our energy parts. so that we can actually get another full energy tank. There we go. And here's the cutscene. Now the start of it's pretty quiet, so I'll talk a little bit here. But Samus apparently is seeing some hieroglyphics she's never seen before. From the Chozo, and that looks like the guy that we met to begin with. So he is a Chozo, but a living Chozo, apparently. I mean, that's what this seems to say. The, And it gets pretty visceral reaction out of Samus. Oh, God. So, what is this? Oh, oh gosh. Oh, boy. And, oh. Ooh, what? They could just be turned off? Huh? They could just be turned off. Okay. Good to know. But somebody helped us out, apparently. Oh, and it's a living Chozo. One of the first living Chozo we've ever seen in a Metroid game, besides the one that attacked us at the beginning of the game. But this one seems to be friendly. And I just love Samus' casual reaction, like, huh. Okay, then. Anaman Henki Maradis. Mirmugitalar suradis me ili agarna lima. 
Uramahar Pantamugi Dorsaral Pura Madrone, Kunihavari Hundar Kalasabekes en Honchani, Lingatalu Ili Uliris, Sabalma, Ashkar Behek, Hasari Gale Ubana Dosh Elegar Mir, Ninu Barash Nek Ili Feruntar Hadar, Les Ninu Kedar, Ili Madrone Mugi, Tanam Tar Bi Hadar Bunta, Eiris dosh eka ili gimel, Ashkar behek gabori dosh balan ili mathroe dosh ili tarin nalima hem satar, Kumbim bi galki sakra, dosh horek bura, Ninu mehirin ili zoha hasana, Bimura gabara ili sahali, dosh uran ili mathroe, Gal mir dostek, ananakoden mugi akalai. Ashkar Behek hem ili maukin, Hasana Hasari anabalta dos humahar sarian, ili darin nalima, les nudakan dos geren humahar korgangal turuta mazroed. Sabalba, hum talaris le shak sirugali nevak, hem mugi lamai dos goro humahar yoris me kohana. Aitar ili gel su manu naloni ishka ili agar nalima. Mugi garama bi eris les nido. Ili tarin nalima megori le shakutanga. Omtar humahar gel su mugi barilin ili eris. Arek ebores ashkar behek eleme irisi dos karodan hum. Ninu aros hakame, ninu mahar mecheni, dos tumema, ninu mahar yoris. Ishili mathroe, meili agar nalima, habari bama mugi sarali, lina tamahar toshek. Nutili mathroe desborodo, ili yoris tar ashkar behek, dora habar bados les maradan. Has. Bados les maradan, ashka urugal ata. Ili emai marhuma satari lin ashkar behek. Tamus arlan, feje hadoran. Ninu habar kumane humdosh, tebolen ili mazroi dim ishka nulis atama harizbi. Thanks, Birdman. Or Quiet Road, I mean. Anaman Bala Miyata Tamus. Ah, crap. What the frig? Okay. Gonna take this guy out. Thankfully, there's a pretty easy way to do it quickly. Just gotta charge up a shine spark and smack him in the face. And he's just being stubborn right now. But we'll get him again. Oh, come on. And here we go. Gotcha. So yeah, that's a pretty easy way to get a kick kill on him. Quick kill on him. But our bird friend is dead. So is the fate of many people that Samus Aran meets, it seems, but either way, that was quite a development. There was a lot of revelations and a lot of information, but we'll be using all of it later in the next part. For now, if you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be updated whenever I or any of the others on this channel release a new episode or part. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to comment, talk about the game, talk about what you'd like to see me do later, talk about uh, any information you might want me to give or find out about for you. And just remember also to have a good day.
We'll see you next time. Take care.